We had it a lot. Uh, we heard about it a lot uh, during the pandemic. Well, when the interest rates were down. Yeah. Um, the bidding wars. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was very common. I don't think it's as common as it was then. But are there strategies to win a bidding war when the market is hot? I mean, yeah. how do you go about that? Because it'll happen again. Yeah. Well, here he is, Mr. Tan Man himself, realty <laughs> expert, John Brodeen, yeah, buddy. How yeah. are you? Good, good. How are you? Good, good. You see, you got this uh, tan like glow to you, and you yeah. said, Oh, it's kind of wearing off now. You should have seen me last week, so oh, rub yeah. it in a little more here. But uh, did you have fun down south? Yeah, yeah, it was great. We were down in Tulum, Mexico. We got back on, um, let's see, late Saturday night, the 17th. Mm -hmm. So, um, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did you drink the water? Uh, no. Okay. No. I, <laughs> I don't. I, I've, I've been all over the world. I've never been to Mexico, but no. I've always been told don't drink the water. Yeah, no, you don't drink the <laughs> tap water there. Okay. Um, I, I've never made that mistake. Down yeah. There, yeah. But, uh, oh, what no, a way to they, ruin a vacation, huh? Yeah. I mean, they still, they gave you, we had this kind of like big, it was like a, you know, those Rubbermaid containers. Mm -hmm, Imagine mm -hmm. like a glass one. Sure. Uh, okay. Had one of those that was pretty big in our room that we could just have a whole bunch of drinking water. So it's okay. a lot nicer than having to order bottles sure. of water from you know, yeah. the front desk every couple of days. See, I think that's the difference between you and I, John. If I'm going to be down there for a week, I'm not going to be drinking water. <laughs> oh, that's the problem. Yeah. If you're going to be having some alcoholic beverages, you got to you gotta drink the water in the evening and in the morning. Oh, I suppose. Get you got to get yourself right. Yeah. You got to get yourself right. <laughs> um, you know, uh, getting back to what we're supposed to be doing here. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we, we had it a lot. Uh, we heard about it a lot uh, during the pandemic well, when the interest rates were down. Yeah. Um, the bidding wars. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was very common. I don't think it's as common as it was then. But are there strategies to win a bidding war when the market is hot? I mean, yeah. how do you go about that? Because it'll happen again. Yeah, it will happen again. And as you know, usually we see it happen even in the years where the interest rates were very high. Okay. Um, in the springtime, we were seeing bidding wars. Uh, you know, it's it's seems like it's when inventory is at its lowest in proportion to the number of homes that are selling, and that okay. creates market conditions that generate bidding wars. You know, regardless of interest rates, it seems like. Um, so if and it, there's a chance it'll be like that again this spring. So for people to get ready, yes, there is a good strategy to have. There are strategies to have when you're gonna be going into a bidding war. Um, you know, and we're gonna treat this like this is a house that we really want. This is our top option. We really do not want to lose this. So mm -hmm. the first thing you have to think about is, you know, what price am I willing to lose this at? What price would I not feel like I missed out if I lost it? You don't want to like, um, you know, if you found out that the person who won paid $5,000 more than you, you don't want to be disappointed that you paid, that, that you weren't willing to pay $5,000 more. You want to be like, okay, this is my walk away number. And so when you've got multiple offers, you are going to have one chance. You're going to come in with your best price. That's the most typical situation. You're going to come in with your best price right off the bat. You're not going to have a back and forth where you start low and then you negotiate up because they're just going to pick the strongest one combination of price and terms. We'll get into the terms next. Okay. But, um, you know, it's, it's, if a new listing hits the market and the market's very hot, uh, and it's attractive and it's fairly priced, if it's getting, you know, four plus offers, um, it's not unusual at all for it to go $10,000 or more over the asking sure, price. Sure. So, just so people are prepared for what the prices look like. And then the next thing to talk about, because this basically is a factor of the price, if if you don't need to ask for any closing costs, if you've got enough cash to cover your down payment and your own closing, glass, closing costs, it's uh, best not to ask for any. If you do have to ask for them, let's say you're planning to offer $5,000 over asking price, but you need to ask for the seller to pay $5,000 towards your closing costs, mm -hmm. well, then you'd come in $10,000 over the asking price because you're getting 5,000 of it back sure, anyway. So sure. you've got to consider what the net of your offer is. And even a an offer that's $10,000 over the asking price, or sorry, an offer that's $5,000 over the asking price, not asking for any closing costs is probably gonna beat an offer that's $10,000 over the asking price that's asking for 5,000 closing costs. Even though the net of the offers is exactly the same, um, the other one has to appraise $5,000 higher. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So that's something to factor in. Make it as clean as possible. Don't ask for closing costs if you can help it. Um, next thing is you're going to see a lot of escalation clauses. Escalation clauses, in my opinion, they're a little bit overhyped. Um, sometimes they can. you don't want to confuse a seller. You don't want to make yourself look cheap to a seller, but they do have their time in place. My recommendations when using escalation clauses, 
is I would suggest don't use an escalation clause unless you're already coming in at full asking price. Don't come in and lowball them. And then you say, well, you're willing to pay up to $10,000 over the asking price, um, $2,000 above the next highest offer, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Because then it makes you look cheap and it might tick off the seller. Whereas if the other offer was just a little bit more straightforward um, and they came in with a strong number right off the bat, it might look a little bit better. And then the other thing is don't use too small of an increment in the escalation clause, meaning um, usually in an escalation clause, somebody will say, I'll beat the highest offer by $2,000 up to 230,000. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't say you'll beat the highest offer by a hundred bucks up to 230,000 yeah. because there's, <laughs> there could be a conventional loan versus a VA loan or FHA loan. And maybe the seller picks the conventional loan, even though it's a hundred dollars yeah, low. Right. Right. Because there's less, you know, hoops that jumps through right, on that right. appraisal process. So if, if, if you ever had somebody say, uh, you know, John, I, I want your help. Um, I, I want you to sell my house. We're mm -hmm. selling. Um, and they, and they tell you a price and have you ever gone, well, you know what? I, I think we could go 10, 20,000 higher than that. Or are you better off? Cause you know that, oh boy, this is, you know, they could go higher, but this is going to be a heck of a bidding war. Do you, how do you talk to them or, or do you even do that? Um, ultimately it's going to be their decision, but I'm going to make sure that they're aware that they could list it for higher. Okay. In my opinion, mm -hmm. um, I, I would never suggest somebody overprice the home. Um, you know, but if you, if I think that I could list it for $20,000 higher and still get a lot of excitement and a lot of buzz around that listing and a lot of demand for it, um, I'm, I'm going to suggest the price that I think is best to get the most demand and to be able to get you the highest sale price. If you really severely underprice the home and maybe you don't get as much attention as you would have needed to drive that price up by 20 grand. If the home is really worth 20 grand more than that person wants to list it at, mm -hmm. you're, it's a gamble. You know, you're going to sell it. And for some people, just the sure sale and get a quick sale is faster. That, that's faster. Sometimes that's more important to the seller. And, you know, in that case, it's their decision ultimately. Um, but you know, you're gambling there that you need to get a crazy amount of activity to bid this thing way yeah, up yeah. Um, compared to, you know. Uh, are, are bidding wars uh, for a realty expert, are they fun or are they like a pain in the ass? Depends what side you're on. Okay, okay, yeah, okay if sure. I'm, if I'm a listing agent and there's a bidding war, I love it because I know well, my, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be able to get my sellers the best possible terms, the best sure. possible price. Everybody's happy. Yeah, I know I did my job as well as I possibly could have for them. Um, on the buyer side, it's a little bit stressful because oh, I bet. you're yeah. having to try to educate the buyer on like, in this case, it's normal to, you know, if you really want this thing, sometimes you have to come in over asking price. You mm -hmm. have to give on terms that otherwise we would insist on. And, you know, so it's, it's definitely more stressful on the buyer side of the transaction and you could lose. So then you just, now they've lost their dream home and, right, you know, sometimes right. you pull out all the stops, you try to do everything perfect, but a super strong cash offer beats you or something like yeah. that. But uh, the other thing is that as we're talking about pulling out all the stops and trying to have the best possible terms, the other thing is home inspection. Um, you can elect not to have a home inspection contingency. Mm -hmm. You know, we typically don't recommend this um, in cases where you're the only offer negotiating. It's usually safer to have a home inspection. But if you're confident about the house and you're willing to waive that for a better chance at winning the bidding war, um, that's another way that's not just related to the price. Uh, that you can make your offer stronger because it's just way less chance of somebody backing out. When when deals blow up, it seems like, you know, 80% of them are because of the home inspection. People use that inspection contingency sometimes if they change their mind just to get out of it and get their earnest money back. Yeah. Or they'll use it, they'll, they'll give a strong offer, but then inspection comes around and then they try to really beat the seller up on price due to things found in the home inspection. And um, then the seller's at a weaker negotiating uh point mm -hmm. at that stage because now you're just dealing with one buyer and you don't you can't maybe you bring the other buyers back in but maybe they found other properties and you don't have that same bidding war effect so it's safer for a seller to accept an offer with no home sale contingent or home inspection contingency then the other the other big thing the two big contingencies are inspection contingency and appraisal contingency um, what some people will do another way to pull out all the stops as a buyer is to offer appraisal gap coverage or waive their appraisal contingency you, you need a lot of cash for both of these. You especially need a lot of cash to completely waive your appraisal contingency because you're saying basically no matter how, if the appraisal comes in low, no matter how low it comes in, we're still going to give you the purchase price. So 
um, you need you need to have a lot of cash to be able to back that up if if in fact that does happen. Mm -hmm. With an appraisal gap coverage, you say I'm willing to pay up to ten thousand dollars over appraised value in event that the appraisal comes in low. So if appraisal if you per, agreed to purchase the place for two hundred thousand. Appraisal comes in at 180. You'd be agreeing to pay 190 for it. Okay. If a, and you're coming up with that 10 grand out of pocket in addition to your down payment. If it comes in at 190, you'd still be agreeing to pay full full purchase price of 200,000. So those are those are definitely some ways. Like, and this is the more competitive of a situation uh, you're in, more offers, um, hotter market. The more of these you might have to use, um, and then. The last thing that's the most risky for a buyer, but it's really, if you really want to pull out all the stops, this is something you can do, is you can you offer a, a large amount of non-refundable earnest money. This is money that if you close on the deal, it gets put towards your purchase, gets put towards your down payment. But if you were to back out for any reason, you lose your job the week before closing and you can no longer get a mortgage, they get to keep that money for their time that they tied it up for you. Um, you know. These terms are not in the buyer's best interest. These terms are tipping things to try to give the seller different things that they want to give them a safer mm -hmm. option, to give them more peace of mind, to get them to want to work with you. So these aren't designed to help the buyer. They're help designed to help the seller, but they're ways that you can try to make yourself more attractive. I mean, obviously cash with no contingencies is going to be the well, best sure. option for yeah. the seller, but these are some <clears throat> ways that you can attempt to compete with that type of offer. Um, you, you know, you mentioned uh, the word competitive. Yes. Now, say you're in a bidding war on the other end. Uh, the people you're representing are trying to buy. Say, yes. you, say you lose out in this bidding war. And, mm -hmm. and the reason I'm asking you this is because you use the word competitive in there. Are you competitive when it comes to this stuff? Does that do you take that like a loss? Like if you were uh, at an MMA fight or, or if you were Taekwondo or whatever, do you do you does that hit you like that? Or is it just comes with the territory and, and because there's other people involved and, you know, like, you know, you also mentioned it could break your heart if you don't yeah. get it. But um, does, how does that hit you being a realty expert? Yeah, I don't I don't take things in real estate too personally, mm -hmm. um, but I, I am bummed out for my clients. Sure. I mean, if my clients made kind of a, if they were OK with losing it and they made kind of a halfways attempt to get the house, but they didn't pull out all the stops. Well, then you can't. Yeah. And I'm kind of thinking like, oh, they'd be really lucky if they right. win this. There's those situations. And sometimes buyers need to learn the hard way a couple of times. Yeah. Even though yeah. I educate yeah. them as best I can on this, sometimes buyers do need to learn the hard way of what it takes to actually win. Sure. In a really competitive market. But um, if you know, the ones that probably are the most disappointing uh, is when a buyer really wants this right, place right. so bad. That would be hard. They pull out all the stops that they have available to them, and then there's still somebody who has a better one. Yeah, and you're thinking to yourself the whole time, boy, I hope they get it. I know. You know? And, and usually it makes complete sense why they would, you know, like mm -hmm. if we do all of these things, but it's still financed, and then there's an offer that's the same price, but it's all cash. Oh, yeah. You know, that makes complete sense. That sucks, yeah. You know, if I was on the other side of the deal, I would advise the seller to do the same exact thing. Yep. You know? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Learned a lot again. Yeah, yeah. How does somebody get a hold of real estate, a realty expert, John Brodeen? 701-213-5428. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead and follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I'm everywhere putting out content every week probably like four videos a week on uh, things that are going to benefit buyers and sellers in real estate. So Perfect. Uh, we'll see you Friday. Yes, sounds good. All right, there you go. Uh, realty expert John Brodeen, that's your Berkshire Hathaway bi-weekly podcast for your Wednesday. A couple of days away from Friday, he'll be back. We'll see you then.